uh, talked about this earlier, is that um, was trying different uh, ROMs. All right. So uh, basically, this is uh, Serendipity, and it's really nice. I like this one so far a lot better than uh, the Cognition mod, mod or Cognition ROM that I tried earlier, which I said was uh, the 2.4.1. That one, like I said, was unstable. I won't go into that because I already said that in the last video. Uh, this one is very stable. It's very fast. Um, I've had it in the on, I guess I should say, my Captivate for maybe about four hours now. Um, I've been using Wi-Fi like crazy, streaming, just to get an idea of how fast it's going to be, if it's going to lag when I'm going through the operating system more, if the battery's going to drain real quick. And as you can see, the battery seems to be doing fairly well I mean on the old cognition by this time during the day I was already receiving a message saying that I needed to uh, to charge it now I did read some forums online said something about resetting uh, your battery or by plugging into charger fully charging it disconnecting it turning it off plugging in this charger then going to recovery and resetting the battery batch file I did that with cognition it didn't matter the battery still drained quickly so I really think it was a problem with the OS this one, like I said, the battery seems to be working a lot better, and it's a lot smoother. Um, it hasn't crashed. Um, I did a test video while I was walking my dog, and it didn't crash. Before, with the Cognition, it would crash. I would open it, and it would freeze for a minute, and it would crash. And that always happened with the camera. Also, the Wi-Fi caused it to lock up, and I'd have to pull the battery. The only thing that I can say, I guess, really negatively, uh, negative about... Um, Serendipity is the fact that not all of the applications are there. Now, what do I mean by that? One of the important applications wasn't there, which is the one I'm pointing at right now. Email. Email wasn't there. Um, they decided, the developers of the ROM decided that they're not going to put all that in there. They're just going to put the basic things that come on Android, and that was it. They weren't going to put any of the AT&T bloat, bloatware, as they call it, you know, like Navigator. And they weren't going to put any Samsung bloatware. But some of those things are very important, which is email. So basically what you need to do is you'll go to uh, the Serendipity uh, ROM homepage. And you can go to their add-on section. And it's basically called an add-on kitchen. And what you do is there's Samsung apps, there's Google apps, and there's battery mods and keyboard mods. And you can check which ones you want. So if you want the email, which of course I want it because I don't just use Gmail. I went in there and I selected the Samsung email, I selected the Samsung video player, the voice recorder, and the quick office. Uh, among some other things, I also put in Google Talk because I do use that, and uh, a few other things like that. So basically you select what you want and then you press build package, and then it builds you a package. I'll give you a little view of the site. Here's the site. And then once you build the package, it builds you a, a custom zip. And then all you do is uh, connect your Captivate to your USB, uh, put in mass storage mode, and then drag the zip from your computer to the root of your Captivate. And then once you do that, then you can go ahead and reboot into recovery, go into uh, install from zip, choose the zip file, which is usually called Serendipity, and then install it. It'll install, and then you reboot. And then you'll get these... Uh, custom applications that you chose so like on this one you can see the email is there uh, one of the other ones that was missing was um, let me find it Google Talk so I put Google Talk back in there the video player voice dialer and voice recorder they were all missing so those all got installed once I did the zip but as you can see, it's it's a really nice interface. As you can see, it's got like a little 3D effect, kind of like movie credits running. It's really nice. And like I said, it's really stable. And so far, it's really good on battery power. So I like it. Um, it's, it's more than any of the other ones that I've had. So that's just my take on it. But uh, anyway, so this is just some of the things that I've been doing with my Captivate. And the other thing that really excites me about the Captivate is the fact that you really have to know what you're doing so much and I can say this because I'm an iPhone user myself uh, so many iPhone users are, are they're so I guess pampered 
I guess is the only way to say it. There's uh, developers out there, you know, uh, the dev team and a few other uh, independent hackers, they come up with the jailbreaks and, and with these, with Cydia mods and, you know, everybody knows who Sarek is with Cydia and they come up with these mods and basically they create these nice packages that you can install. Uh, and the jailbreaks too. They're all programs that basically you click it and and you're done. And a lot of the Android uh, routes are like that, but some of them aren't. Like on this one, I had to basically go back down to the stock 2.1 Eclair. I didn't have what's called the three button boot, so I had to fix that issue. Once I fixed that issue, then I had to go ahead and do the root, and then once I did the root, I had to install the clockwork recovery mod to get a recovery mod because it had the Samsung recovery mod and then I was able to then install serendipity so there's a lot of steps that you have to do and because of that I like it because you really have to know what you're doing it gives you something to look forward to iPhone users they're, they're so baby they want everything done for them and they complain and they whine when, when they don't get it you know I, I've lost track of how many times I've been on forums or I've gotten replies to my videos where people are, are complaining or, or whining, you know, when's the jailbreak going to come out? When's the unlock going to come out? You know, it comes out when it comes out. You know, you're not paying these people to do it, so just calm down. So that's one of the other things I really like about Android. That's just my two cents. And like I said, I am a very experienced iPhone user, and right now I, I think I'm better than novice as far as the cap the Android operating system. I'm learning a lot more every day about it. So speaking from both sides, I can definitely see the benefits to the iPhone and to the Android. In my personal professional opinion, I think Android actually does have the edge. The operating system is nice and it's not that hard to get used to. You know, the I everybody says, oh, the iPhone user interface is so easy and Android is hard. It's not. You use it just like you use the iPhone, you get used to it. It's it's not that hard. The only thing with the Android is that you really have to know what you're doing if you're going to decide to root these things or modify your devices. As we're with the iPhone, it's pretty much an application. You install it, it does it for you. There's not much that you as the end user have to do so that's the reason why at this point I, I never thought I'd say it I would give the slight edge to Android over the iPhone I love what the iPhone can do but as far as modifying it and having to know what you're doing and not just have everybody who thinks they know what they're doing try to modify their phone you actually have to know what you're doing so that's why I like the Android just a little bit better than the iPhone you know we won't get into the hardware aspects of it I know that the iPhone 4 and, and, and the Galaxy and all them are, are very close, you know, as far as hardware wise, they're very, very close to each other uh, as far as the capabilities. But as far as the operating system, I can see why Android is starting to pull ahead of, of Apple and iOS because there is a lot more things you can do with it. Now, it is open source, which is a good thing, but we all know it also can be a bad thing. You know, with open source, you get uh, more developers, more developers, more apps, more games, but you also have the higher risk of malware or viruses and things of that nature uh, with the iPhone it's not as high a risk I'm not gonna say it's not there because it is it's just not as high of a risk so there is some give and take there but as far as the operating system itself and my experience with it and people that I've talked to who have used Android for a while uh, I don't really know anyone that's ever really gotten any bad virus or malware on on their Captivate and they do give you software I mean there's a free one here which is recommended by the Better Business Bureau and has great reviews which is called Lookout and you can get the premium version or you can get the free version and it gives you virus scanning privacy and you can also even it has a missing device you know that everyone says well you, if you have an iPhone 4 you can get to find my iPhone well if you get this application you can also find your missing device and, and a lot of other out-of-the-box Android devices have that feature so they're very comparable as far as what they can and can't do as far as the operating system I do see how Android and Google is starting to pull a little bit away from iOS so we'll see what Apple has to say in June once they announce iOS 5 because there should be some exciting new features that are released in there hopefully one of them is notification but we'll see where that goes but anyway this is just my take my two cents on the Android some of the things I'm doing with my Android and some of the different ROMs that are out there and my comparison between the iPhone and the Android